Hello, Viking fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Viking Talk with Coach Josh Morgan. I'm Brandon Davis, and always glad to have with us Warren Central Red Football Coach Josh Morgan. Coach, good to see you again. You too, Brandon. Well, Coach, a 42-41 overtime win last Friday night against Oak Grove. Give us your thoughts on the game. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was kind of uh, the, the back and forth was, was uh, it was just a, uh, could never catch your breath. It was a, uh, it was a uh, very proud of our guys. Uh, how they traveled, how they handled all that, and then uh, uh, just the, the, the four quarters of just nonstop back and forth and um, really sticking to what we're trying to do uh, game plan wise and always, you know, uh, making the next play and, 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 and uh, finding a way to just continue to respond and, and uh, uh, the mental toughness that we showed, uh, just uh, uh, very proud of the effort and uh, execution in all three phases and uh, it, was a, it was a special night and, and I'm very glad that our kids got to experience it. And uh, we know told them before the game they were going to have to earn everything and uh, I thought they did that and uh, just very proud of them and uh, coaching staff as well just, just uh, uh, put together a, a really good game plan. The guys did a wonderful job just executing and left everything on the field and there were some tired youngins after the game and uh, just very proud, very pleased, and uh, uh, with the overall effort uh, of our guys. Well, if you are a cardiologist out there and you are friends, you want to be a sponsor of Orange Central Football, <laughs> come on over and talk to us. But i tell you what, that other heart attack type game, a, a very, like you said, it was one that was a back and forth all night, a very exciting one to be a part of. It was probably better if you weren't a fan of either program right. to watch that game, <laughs> but it was a good one. Your defense coach, they forced eight turnovers. They were recovered six, reco uh, returned two for touchdowns. Outstanding night by the defense. Talk about that unit. Well, you know, we, uh, we gave up some big plays. Uh, I think we had seven plays over 20 yards, and uh, that was tough. Uh, but Oak Grove had a lot to do with that. They are super explosive. You know, we talked last week about that, about how much pressure they put on you. Uh, we weathered that storm. I thought we'd played tremendous on fourth down. Uh, I think they went for it several times and we turned them over on downs. Um, they put their athletes in space. I thought we did a good job of pursuing the football. If one guy missed them, you know, we had other guys rallying to the ball. And uh, I thought we, we, we tackled well uh, uh, for the most part and uh, just opportunistic. I mean, our guys. Uh, you know, good things happen to people who hustle. We were around the football, and when they made mistakes, you know, our guys were there, and they knew what to do with it. And, uh, you know, we work a lot on scoring on defense and, and not falling on fumbles and picking them up and scoring. And, uh, and I thought Zach did a good job with that, and, and Ronnie made a special play when uh, he made his interception. And, you know, if, if uh, when you go back and look, uh, we made such smart decisions, not blocking behind the play. And, uh, clipping and, and making unnecessary blocks. So, you know, it's, it's a lot more than what people look at. You know, uh, as a coach, you go back and look at all the things that you work on. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you see your guys wall them up and the guys that are behind the plate, you know, letting, you know, not making any silly mistakes. And uh, so, uh, you know, we needed all those turnovers. Uh, very proud of our guys uh, being opportunistic, forcing those big plays. We were putting put our hat on the ball and, and uh, forcing those fumbles. And uh, you know, we needed all of them. Uh, on the other side of that, our offense didn't turn the ball over. We went forward on fourth down one time and, and didn't get it. But other than that, we had zero turnovers, and that was the uh, you know, ultimate. That's got to be the deciding part of the ball game. Yeah, you talk about the offense. The offense did struggle in the first half. We didn't have over 100 yards this game. I know that's something rushing. I know that's something that we pride ourselves on. But you did make a good adjustment in the second half, open up the intermediate passing game. They did open up some things for us in the rushing game of the second half. Talk about – those adjustments that you guys made. I thought uh, I thought Jack played a, a good ball game. Um, I, 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 he took some sacks early on, and it was the right play. Uh, if it if it didn't force anything, uh, we talked about going in. Uh, you know, it's not a bad deal to, to to end each drive with a kick, whether it's an extra point or, or a punt. Uh, we just could not turn the ball over. We couldn't make them have short fields. We couldn't. Uh, we couldn't, you know, turn the ball over and, and, and let them get that going on us. So uh, I thought we did a good job taking care of the football. Uh, it was tough sledding. We, we, uh, we knew it would be. Uh, they, they got seven really good players uh, that are always going to be in the box. Uh, but what they did, uh, you know, they opened up some stuff that, that we took advantage of. And uh, I thought 
I thought Rob caught an excellent ball game. Uh, you know, really had them schemed up well. Thought our guys did a good job executing them and uh, setting them up in the man coverage. And like you talked about, that uh, those passing games and those delays that we were uh, running. And uh, so I thought we took advantage of that. And, and uh, I thought bringing in Trey at, at our uh, uh, and our quarterback and, and, and including that in our running game uh, really helped us out too. And I've uh, been working on that, kind of keeping that in our back pocket. But uh, uh, that was good for us as well. Well, we get to overtime. I had a 10-point lead. I think we got the game sealed away. Of course, they claw back into it, tied up uh, with less than a minute to go. You get to overtime, you score, you got a decision to make. You take the big gamble, decide to go for two. Walk us through that decision. Well, you know, we, we, were, we were just about gassed on defense. We, we, uh, we had two uh, long uh, interceptions and a fumble return, and our, our defense is sprinting down the field and, and scoring, and then – they got to go right back on the field, and uh, you know, so you do that, and, and then uh, when they got an onside kick, and our defense has got to go right back on the field, uh, and we played it was 78 snaps defensively, and that's just about unheard of in high school football, and that's a lot in college. Uh, and we were about we were about we were about gassed out, and, and uh, uh, that was so that had something to do with it, and, and also uh, I felt like they had the momentum, as, as you mentioned, they had just scored. Uh, 10 points very quickly at the end of regulation and just scored in overtime. Um, and uh, felt like we also had a, uh, a good play. I thought, uh, you know, every, every week we work on two-point plays and prepare for that moment again. Uh, Rob had a, a really good play drawn up that we liked and, and we felt good with. and uh, So we really didn't approach it like a gamble. I, I felt like it was a good decision, and we trusted our guys, and, and uh, you know, we went with our gut. Let's go back to that two-point play. Talking to hearing Rob talk and others after the game, ball was supposed to go to Trey Hall. He falls down in the backfield. Yep. Talk about Jack doing a great job of reading through progressions and finding Maddox. For so we, we knew they'd be in man coverage. Had a play drawn up for it, and uh, like as you mentioned, it was going to. Uh, it was designed to go to Trey, but we always have backup plans that are built in. Uh, so two really, uh, you know, he heady plays. Uh, you know, one by Maddox as he was coming in, and then he got off of his route and, and uh, really found an opening. But Jack just keeping his cool, uh, didn't panic, didn't get out of the pocket, had a great pocket, had great protection, uh, stayed in there, uh, really cool and, and calm and uh, collective there, and, and just delivered an absolute strike. And uh, man, that was just uh, it was an incredible feeling. And uh, that's why you coach, and, and uh, that's why you play and to watch our guys. Uh, you know, erupt, just erupt with just pure joy and everything come together. And uh, it, what, a, what a great special moment that uh, none of us will never forget. And if, if uh, uh, I, I think I, it's safe to say everybody who watched it that was a bike and they, they, that one would be remembered for a long time. Well, a crowd that was loud the entire night went deathly silent. You could hear a pin drop in there yeah. except for our side. If you missed it, you missed a treat. This is Viking Talk. We're visiting with Coach Josh Moore. And Coach, this week, the number one team in the state, Brandon Bulldogs, they come a-calling. Tell us what you know about them. Well, you know, they have, uh, uh, you know, most of all their offense is back from last year's team that, that went to the state championship. Uh, uh, so, you know, you got to deal with that. There's just weapons everywhere. Uh, several good wide outs, uh, uh, several backs uh, that are just, uh, just really, really good football players. A quarterback that's, uh, you know, Really, really runs the show well and, and does a good job, and so they have no weaknesses on offense. They, they truly are uh, loaded at every spot and, and with great depth. Offensive line is, is very good, and uh, defensively they're always sound. They're always good, and they're, and they're going to to be where they're supposed to be. They're going to be uh, great in the pressure packages, and and uh, so they you know they really are a complete football team that's uh, on top of all that, very well coached, and and uh, so they're they're. Uh, uh, definitely the team to beat in the state, uh, and uh, you know we've we've got our opportunity and our chance at them. Well, we faced them twice last year, but this offense is led by quarterback Landon Barnes. Talked about him, the junior youngster. He's done a great job, averaging 39 points per game so far this season. A fast-paced offense, coach. Maybe one of the fastest you'll see. It's hard to get subs in, and we experienced that last year. How do you slow this tempo down? Well, you know you you got to make stops. I think negative plays. Uh, hurt tempo offenses, uh, so we, we've got to be able to make tackles for losses and, and uh, force incompletions and disrupt that timing because, the, as you mentioned, they uh, they want to go fast, and I don't know if fast is, is really the word. I mean, they, they are 
their turbo. And uh, so it's uh, uh, that, that's hard to defend. Uh, it, 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 takes, uh, it takes us out of the game as coaches in some aspect as far as getting personnel and different packages and, and different calls in. Uh, so it really makes you uh, be prepared during the week and you got to let your guys uh, be able to make some calls on their own and be coached up because it's not going to be coaching between plays and lining up in different packages. So uh, we learned a lot the first time we played them. Uh, we've adjusted some things and, 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 and tweaked some things, and, and hopefully it'll pay off for us. But uh, they're, they're hard to defend as it is, and then you throw that tempo in uh, where they're truly setting the tone and limiting to what you can do. Uh, but it's going to come down to us being able to consistently stop the run. Uh, I think they have three very good backs and a, a good offensive line. And, uh, you know, most people see the uh, – the perimeter passes and the, and the explosive plays. But, it, you know, with them, it starts with the running game and them wearing you down uh, and getting you out of alignment. And, uh, you know, you know when you get tired and, and, and that starts creeping in, uh, that leads to bust, misalignment, and those things like that, the little things that helps you win games. So, uh, you know, we, we've got to be careful uh, and we've got to be, uh, got to be on point. And, and our guys have to be really prepared because they're going to have to handle a lot of stuff on their own. You talked about those three backs. Maybe one of the best three-headed monsters in the state, Jarvis Durr, who a Louisiana Tech commit, Nate Blunt, who is one of the best junior backs in the state, and then a, a sophomore that transferred over this year, and Quincy Phillips. With the spread concept that they run, Coach, they like to spread you out, and then they'll run between the tackles and, you know, and between the guards. What type of a challenge does that pose to a defense? Well, I mean, you have to. everybody has to do their job. You can't just key in on one person. Uh, they, they've just got – uh, I think their receivers are, are very, uh, very explosive and can make plays. Uh, again, they've all played. They're all seniors. Uh, this has been their group, uh, even from the little six days that when they won the little six. And so it's, this is their special group. And, uh, you know, we've got to do our job, be in the right placements. We can't key in on one person. Uh, but at the end of the day, they got one football. And uh, we, have to, we have to be where we're supposed to be and uh, make sure that we're on point. And, and uh, being the best version of ourselves as, as we can be and, and uh, really pursue the ball and, and uh, limit big plays. Well, defensively, they did lose some talent in graduation, but they are yielding only 17 points a game so far this season against a very good schedule to this point. What does the film talk to you about them defensively? Uh, you know, they, they're, they're, they're disruptive up front. I think they have a, a good linebacking core. Uh, the two of those guys are back from last year, and, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, last year, the, a lot of the, the D line is. It just feels like that, that uh, the ones that they lost last year. They've they've got some guys in there that are, uh, you know, just really doing a good job and playing hard nosed, tough, uh, great assignment football. And when you do that, you're going to be hard to beat. And uh, we're going to have to out block them. We're going to have to out run. Uh, and we're going to have to do a good job of of uh, winning those battles up front. They're not going to beat themselves. So we're, we're you know we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to win the line of scrimmage on both sides if we want to win. Well, in the state championship game last year against Madison Central, I had a chance to have an up-close up view of that. Madison Central's offensive line, in addition to many other things, the, their offensive line, though, Madison Central's was extremely physical in helping them get that win, Coach. How important do you think it's going to be this week for our offensive line to take control of this ball game and to help us keep our offense on the field? Yeah, you know, it, sometimes, uh, really all the times, it, if you use it the right way, you know, your offense can be your best defense. Uh, and what I mean by that is we have to, uh, we have to control uh, time of possession. Uh, we have to have the ball. We have to put together long, sustaining drives, uh, and we have to get points out of them. They're going to score. Uh, what we can't have is our, is our defense, uh, uh, you know, on the field all night long and, and, and allowing them to wear us down. And, and uh, so it's imperative that we're able to consistently move the football. And, and uh, you know, that's just not the running game, but we have to get it going. And uh, we have to be able to, to get those four and five yards and those tough yards and consistently stay in front of the changes and, and, uh, and move the chains. And, and uh, that's going to be important. If, if we can't do that, we're not going to be very successful. So obviously when you're trying to scout a team like this, you know, it's hard to have the personnel to try to do the up speed tempo that they have. So when you struggle with doing that, do you mainly focus on your defense, making sure open field tackling and things like that, that you're really on top of that? Because you know that you're going to have to be successful in that area. This yeah, you know, tackling, you know, you can't overlook tackling, blocking and tackling, name of the game. And, and uh, you know, we've tried to simulate the tempo. Uh, we would have two different offensive groups going back to back in our, in our, uh, during our week. And, uh, 
again, you know, I really feel like we, we learned a lot uh, the, the last year when we played them, and, and uh, you know, our guys know what to expect and what that looks like, and and uh, it's been good for us. And uh, so we we, we kind of uh, we understand uh, uh, what we did wrong last time and, and things the way we can get better. But we know we got to tackle in space. We we, we have to. Uh, pursue the football in case one man does miss it because those guys are it's, it's almost identical to Oak Grove as far as their skill uh, I just feel like they, they've got better um, and more depth in the backfield and more physical up front and uh, you know that's the way we're looking at it and I thought uh, you know our Oak Grove game going into this is, is going uh, it'll pay really good dividends for us because having experienced a game like that uh, which we had not been a part of that kind of offense uh, that's going to pay, you know, that's going to be really good for us. And I'm glad we had to experience that. And I think it'll help us going into this game. A top 10 matchup this week, Coach, is going to be here at home. It's going to be a beautiful night. You and I were talking about it before, the, before we started the show. The weather's just been fantastic. These are the type of games you want to be a part of as a coach. Yeah, and any time a, uh, you know, a big team comes in, big, big tight ball game at home, you know, that's uh, – that's uh, that's special, and our kids are really excited about it, and our community is really excited about it. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm thankful for the opportunity. Everybody doesn't don't get to play in these games, and uh, I'm glad our guys get to experience this. And and uh, you know, you go down to Oak Grove and uh, you pull out a district win. I think that's the first time they've been beating a district game in three or four years, and it's not not easily done. You get to experience that, come back with some confidence. Um, and they just get bigger, and uh, that's the good thing about it. So uh, very thankful for this opportunity. Uh, I'm glad our guys are getting to experience this. They've, they work really hard, and, uh, you know, what we do with this opportunity is on us. And uh, uh, it's just been a, it's been a, good, it's been a good week. Uh, our guys have had, a, uh, you know, we knew that we had to get right back to work quick, fast, and in a hurry on Monday. Uh, our guys have done that. They understand this. I played them twice last year. Uh, didn't didn't come out the way that we wanted to, and uh, got another chance, another opportunity, and and uh, looking forward to it. Well, it's going to be a beautiful night. It's going to be a great crowd. We're going to have a great time. So hopefully we have a big crowd here. Yes. And from all from everything that it sounds like, I know Brandon's bringing a big group. So hopefully we have a, a big crowd to match that. Let's talk about last week's win, though. A big emotional win for you last week as a coaching staff, also as a team. You talked about you got back to work, but how challenging is it for you as a coaching staff and as a team, to put that one behind you to focus on this next one attack. I don't, you know, the the trip, the trip was a, uh, you know, that's those, that's a long trip. I think everybody Saturday was just, you know, about dead, uh, just from not only the trip and and the, uh, the time on the bus and back and forth and the, and uh, all that goes with it. I think we finished the game at like eleven o'clock and oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> you know, long and then back. and then you're mentally exhausted and you're just that slap wore out, but. Uh, like I said, you know, you got you got you got the number one team coming back, and uh, I think that helped a lot. And I think that helped, you know, like we got to go and uh, got to get back going, and and uh, you know, enjoy it over the weekend and the patting on the back and all that's you know it's over with. Let's get ready to get better and learn. And I think we did a good job with that, you know, setting the tone Monday, uh, trying to get better. And we didn't play. I felt like I told our team Monday. I felt like you know we probably played a. Uh, uh, maybe a C plus or a B game, uh, and, I, and I meant that. I just, we didn't uh, we didn't play as well as we could have played, and that's what we're after. It's not just wins and losses. We want the best uh, that that our guys have to offer that out of each and every one of them. And uh, and uh, until we get that, they won't stop getting coached. And uh, that's what we're after is our best, and uh, we feel like our best will be good enough. So uh, that's what we're chasing. How they do this week in practice? Had a good week. Had a good week. We had a good. We knew. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, for us to win, it's going to have to. We're going to have to out physical them uh, on both sides of the football, and uh, getting ready for that kind of a mindset and, and just a good slug fest and uh, two two big heavyweights going after it. Uh, and uh, you know, we had to. We, I thought we did a good job of of being physical, but also making sure everybody shows up healthy on a Friday. Uh, so we you know we did good with that, and uh, I thought we were able to get our work done, but also keep each other healthy, and. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're prepared as we can be. Keys to victory this week, Coach? Well, you know, time of possession is one for us. We've got to have the ball. We've got to have long drives. Uh, you know, we've got to do, we've got to do good. We've got to do good on that end. Uh, we, we've got to continue to, I think we've done a really good job taking care of the football. Uh, I don't know what our, our turnover ratio is right now, uh, but I do know this, that we have taken extremely care of the football uh, and, and we need to continue to do that. Uh, 
defensively, you know, if you're talking about time of possession, that means defense has got to get off the field too. Uh, so we, we've got to, we can't let them keep us on the field all night and wear us down. Uh, feel good about our defense. We just got to make sure that, 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 uh, uh, that we're not giving up those long sustaining drives. So I think time of possession is crucial. Uh, I think on defense, we've got to limit, eliminate the big plays, uh, which we've talked about and worked on. Uh, and we'll continue to work on that uh, and, and being good there and uh, continue to be solid in the special team. So it's a... Uh, uh, That'll be a really big part for us there. When we got opportunities to get points, we got to make sure that we come away with points. But uh, defensively, we can't let them get the run game going, and uh, whatever that looks like. And, and I know it's a, a challenge, but uh, uh, I think if we'll if we'll do that and, and uh, control the clock offensively, move the chains efficiently, um, we'll we'll have a lot better odds of winning. Well, coach, best of luck to you. Thank you for your time again this week. Yep, thank you. Well, folks, you need to be here this Friday night. This, like I said, it's going to be a fantastic atmosphere. The weather's going to be great. No excuse for it being hot. Uh, a number one team in the state coming in. Your Vikings ranked number six in the state. It's going to be a great ball game here, great atmosphere. Come out and support these kids. We appreciate all your support throughout the season. This is going to be a great one. Coach, if we win this game, you're going to be first place in the region. And that's something last season we started out 0-3 in the region. So quite a change from last season. Yeah. So, Yep. Keep pressing forward and hoping right. for the best. Well, next week we'll come back to you. We're going to talk about the Northwest ranking game as we'll be traveling on the road over to Flowood to face Sam. We'll also talk about this branding game. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the show. For Josh Morgan, I'm Brandon Davis. We'll see you next week. Until then, rise up, Vikings.